Um, I made the work three years ago, started to make it in 2017-18, uh, um, based on the, the erratic boulders that Darwin found in Cumidwell up in North Wales. So really that started a, an inquiry, if you like, to have an encounter and to find these objects within the landscape that were um, not meant to be there, that they were displaced, dislocated. So I was just interested in that notion of how the environment moves another environment, if you like, or, or boulder um, to a, another place. So subsequently I spent um, nearly two and a half years just photographing and going out to wander and find erratics in Snowdonia National Park and South Wales and up at the west coast really, up into Scotland as well. Uh, yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, sort of geographical time, long time, um, and then this sort of, I think I was really interested in the this interruption of um, Darwin's sort of process and his sort of statement really of how, you know, evolutionary change and how uh, over time ge geological change has sort of shaped the landscape, carved the landscape. And, that, and at that point, that broke, uh, sort of disturbed a myth so it's like, you know, the myth before that really was that land was, the, the land was created, you know, by the great flood and, uh, the, you know, the, the myth from um, sort of religion, really, in terms of how the world is created. So it's just this sort of this tension between that disruption and, and, and Darwin's discovery and, and then my own wandering, really, within the landscape. So going, taken on board this idea that you could, I could walk um, with an intention, but also uh, being lost along the way, so not knowing whether I'd find something. So taken on board that sort of idea in the location of this work. I think what happens when, for me, going out to find these boulders or in this search of a boulder, an erratic boulder specifically, um, it's an encounter. So it's a process that uh, the walk to that place is a process. And then this, this encounter with an object. And, and, and I think at that time or in that time in the, the photographic process, then I would spend quite a lot of time within the so the kinesphere, if you like, of these objects. So in relationship to them, looking at them, climbing on them, um, touching them, looking at them from different angles, and then just wondering really, you know, where did they come from? And, and I think that's that translation over to the, uh, the relationship that, you know, to human relationship, really, to have this sort of sense of like the more than human um, effect that an object can have on you and then translating that work now to then move it towards the uh, that shift into terms of metamorphosis well it's an yeah that's great actually i mean sometimes one of the things that you've also said to me um in conversations that we've had this week is this sort of disembodied or this voiceless body and in some ways trying to give voice to those bodies through the process or the, sh the, um, the project, how it's changed for Metamorphosis Festival. And I, and I sort of thought about them in, as objects, um, as in terms of like a, the found object in the landscape. Um, more like this, you know, that we, we stumble across them. They're not, it's not a deliberate, that who, who owns them? You know, who's... Who, who placed them or what placed them? How did they get there? So this sort of found object that the only way that I could take that with me was through this photographic process, which is to use the analog, you know, the analogic process. So, so we still have this, you know, what's called really this idea of this referent. So there's a shadow, the use of light, you know, hitting this object and then bouncing onto the film and then that support of film. So... And, and then allowing that object or that body, I mean, it's a, it's a geological body, um, to move again. Yeah. And I think that's a sort of like that interest of 
they were placed or located I located and then they're being relocated. I was thinking about the actual geology as well and, and the sort of like the topography of Pontio and how it's built on a hill and how we sort of see the, the you know, the, I think particularly as well just to have this idea when I came here to sort of think about where would these boulders sit and, and we got this location or this outward looking place, certainly is when you walk through the Pontio and the Banga buildings and go higher up, we can look right back through to the mountains where they came from or rather where they landed. They didn't come from there, they landed there. And, I, and I, this lo location here, the title of the work, the original work is called Hidden in Plain Sight and here they are, they're smack bang in the middle of Bangor, but they're actually tucked away in this building, in this little tiny sort of corner. Almost this sense of being captured, being sort of like, um, you know, landed on this hillside and then this receding um, sort of hubbub of the people that are just falling away from this environment. So I hope that they uh, invoke questions really about the almost like they're like strangers that have come into town if we want to sort of put a um a sense of like how do we translate this geology and this specific finding into cultural sort of thinking and and what does it mean to sort of be arrive here in La in Bangor and you know feel uh, relocated or out of place or to place A lot of people tend to uh, like humanise this, you know, because of the shape, because of their bodies. They, they, you know, they they have an affinity with our physical shape as well. And um, I, I was just thinking as well when you were saying that, but this idea that they're almost they're a they're a, a sort of a shadow, aren't they? From the the the, the actual boulders are out there. They still exist, and so we've got a double that allows them to carry on another um, aspect of themselves in this uh, sort of like shift in temporality, really. So there's all coming into a contemporary time yeah. and separate from their geological time, or not separate. OK, so in for metamorphosis, um, I had the idea then to actually think about the, an exhibition in a box um, and, and to make the work as a series of postcards. So something really small that we could actually handle. And, and very much the part of the sort of parameters of this work really is to consider scale and what that actually means visually, but also what that means to have an encounter so we can have an encounter with something really, really small or really, really big. So although we've got these sort of um, large prints up in the space here, then I wanted to invite um, and, and, and metamorphose this project into uh, an invitation for people to have an encounter with the work in a very intimate way. And, and then to progress that further in, in the sense of actually asking the question, talk to me, and or Sharad um, V, and, and that really comes out of the pandemic, I think, from you know missing this tactile touch connection with another, um, and also this sort of way of communication that we uh, like the images here on the main ex or this sort of pop up exhibition here. We have this glass between us and it, and um, this sort of you know, our methods of communication have been very much a screen-based, online-based, which has been amazing, but we all crave this tactility. And I sort of wanted to bring that back, but instead of then seeing work again behind the glass frame, but is to actually have an encounter with the work itself and rearrange it, so curate it in your own way, and then 
um, an invitation to write your story and um, be part of a, a developing project, a new project. And that, that sort of like traditional um, aspect of the postcard, isn't it, where we, you know, we send a message home from the place that we go on holiday, you know, or we relocate somewhere and we send a message back. And, and I was just thinking about that, that groundedness of doing that, you know, taking a card, sitting in a cafe, sticking your stamp on it and then writing a message to somebody. But I also thought that, you know, um, Sharod um, uh, Evolvi, you know, it, talk, you know, sh talk with me, talk to me, that this is a, a, a sense of actually talking to myself as well. So it allows us to actually have a conversation with um, an erratic boulder that circulates back to yourself. There you go. So it's a gift. Yeah. <laughs> so you can actually hold an exhibition in your hands and mm. it feels really good. So the texture of the cards is um, really nice. I don't know how you call that kind of texture. Well, it's just very matte and very absorbent, really, isn't it? It's sort of so, in a way, it moves away from that gloss and that reflection again. So it, it's it's this another iteration. It's a very different one from seeing them in the windows at Pontio, for example, and dealing with your own reflection and your sense of um, place within the image through through the reflection of light. Whereas here, these small cards just give a, a very sort of calm sense of um, space where, where they are and how would you lay these shapes out and how would you relate to them and how would you talk to them? What would you say? Where do you come from? What's your story? How old are you? It's beautiful. It is. Yes, yes. This is just calling for imagination. Mm. Wow. Mm. How does this... Wow. It's amazing. And do you know what I find incredible as well in terms of perception? And I took a, um, a, a quote, really, from Chris Tilly, who's an anthropologist. And he talks about, you know, not being able to see the same size... Um, of a stone at one time because we can't but the other side exists and with all of these imagery um, and it's like the opposite side like the, these two um, there's a bit of playfulness going on here this, these two are the same for the same oh, size wow. of the same boulder and then you know, so although they look, that's um, old red sandstone in South Wales, um, is absolutely beautiful. Taken on the same day. Same day, same time. Even the grass yeah. behaves different. Mm. And in terms of just that moment of light and how it's affected. And, you know, if you were to see, like, the other side of that, it's completely smooth. Yeah. There's no break. So what happened to them? I, that's my question. What happened to you? that you look this way, that you, that you lay into the landscape this way. Do you feel comfortable? You know, is this, is this your, you know, do you, does this feel good? These, these are also questions. Do you think they, came, I mean, they all came a long way? Mm. Do you think they came to meet us. Mm. So when you walk, I haven't done the walk yet, so it might be a good idea to do the walk, but I wonder whether people, you know, is it I came the, the way to meet you, 
the boulder, or is it actually the boulder, you know, did this journey to meet me, to meet, or yeah. us, mm. and mm. talk to us, mm. 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 and arrive at this point in time. Yeah. 